Welcome back to episode 19 of building our ultimate expedition vehicle. In this episode, we wrap up the rear bumper and tire carrier and apply our graphics. I'm Courtney, and that's my husband, Riley. Driven by a desire to learn new skills, we set off to build our ultimate expedition vehicle. With a timeline of two months, we are pushing ourselves to create a vehicle that will allow us to ski, mountain bike, and off-road our way through the country. We had no idea what we were getting ourselves into when we started this project, but it's turning into so much more than just an RV. So buckle up and follow along, because this is Ambition Strikes. This is the hitch receiver for the bike rack, and I'm gonna weld this nut on the top so that we can tighten the bolt down and keep the rack from wobbling or rattling. So if you're just getting started in fabrication, I assume you already have a welder and a grinder. The very next tool I would recommend you purchase is a portable bandsaw. As you can tell by the condition of this thing, I have used and abused it for years, and it served me very well. It's great for cutting down tubing or angle iron, and I also grab mine in the vise and then use it as a little vertical bandsaw for cutting brackets and tabs and stuff. Super, super handy, um, and if you buy one, you won't regret it. Today we're working on finishing up the rear bumper. That's gonna include adding a hitch receiver for a bike rack right here. So the original plan for the spare tire carrier that I started working on this morning was a long bar that went straight up from here with a little angled brace. Tire goes up here, hitch here, bike rack sticks out this way. And I was really worried about the weight of the tire plus the bikes when we hit bumps or whatever bending this whole thing down and, and then smacking the camper. I don't think it was gonna work. So new plan is that the tire carrier is independent from the bumper. It's gonna go from our, our rack here, across this way, put the tire here, and then the bumper is just gonna be used for the bike rack. I'm using steel because aluminum has some pretty bad, bad fatigue issues and fatigue cracking and with the the concentrated weight of the tire on the center of this rack, I didn't want to have to worry about the, the welds in this area cracking. So I decided just to go ahead and use steel. It's not a very big piece. It's not gonna add a ton of weight. I'm going to drill a 7 8 hole through this angle and actually weld this nut on the backside and that's how the tire is going to attach to this. So now it's time to tack the whole thing together and then make sure it actually fits in the truck how I expect. special washer I made, so it's got these two diameters. The smaller one rests on the, on the center bore of the wheel and the larger one presses on the outside of the wheel. The key into drill, to drilling into steel is a lot of feed pressure. You do not want this drill bit chattering on the surface. You want this drill bit cutting the material. So that's why you see me, even with a hand drill, I've got two arms and I'm pushing down on the top of this drill pretty much as hard as I can um, to get enough feed pressure to actually cut the steel. So the concern was that if somebody ran into the back of this ski gear box, it would actually cave in the back of the camper right here and that would be extremely difficult to repair. Same goes for the cassette toilet door. I built this uh, little crash bar that goes right there so that now if somebody rear ends us, they'll hit this and transfer that load into the bumper instead of into the, into the camper. Um, and a similar one for the cassette toilet box door. We have been rear-ended on the freeway. 
it was awful and it was in a vehicle that we had poured thousands of hours of labor into. So we're gonna learn from that and we're gonna do our best to not smash in the back of our camper if we do get rear-ended. Today is a very exciting day. I'm gonna be doing the graphics on the truck, so I need to get it really clean first. And I was a little worried about washing the vinyl because I know that the truck is covered in aluminum and wood right now. So the internet recommended one of these foam cannons to kind of do a touchless wash before you scrub anything. So we're gonna give that a shot. Are you ready? No, it... <laughs> you have to turn the hose on. Yeah. Last night, our graphics arrived. I am so excited. I laid them out so that they could kind of relax, flatten out. I'm gonna start with the little graphics, kinda get back on the horse, and then we will switch to the big graphics. So step one, I'm gonna use painter's tape and I'm gonna take my graphic and I'm gonna tape it up where I think it should go. So now that I have it level and where I want it to go, I'm gonna use the hinge method to apply it. So I've taped this side so that it can't move. I'm gonna peel this side back and apply half of it. That's gonna hold it in place and level and then I can apply the other half. Now that I have about a third of the sticker applied, it can't move. So now I can just peel back this side and apply the other two thirds. The idea here is that bracket I just cut out goes there. And then this little LED license plate light will go right above it. So I need a bracket to hold the factory trailer wiring. And I'm just gonna whip one of those up real quick using the plasma table. Well, let's see if it fits. Perfect. Got the buffer pulled off, and now I'm going to chop these ends off at an angle and cap them to make them look nice. So I'm working on Frenching this hitch receiver into the bumper but uh, the blade snapped. I knew we were getting close to the end on this one, but time to change it out. I can't do this last cut with the porta band, so I'm using my rhino grinder. To 